Let's make a cool tree. Let's see how to do that. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, fans, back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be making a custom tree over here, which is going to include all of the different blocks for the tree, as well as the sapling and then spawning that tree from the sapling. The only thing not included in this tutorial is spawning it inside of the world. That's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. Now, regardless of that, we will still need the basic world gen setup. So if you have not gone through this, we will require the mod configured features class over here, basically all set up and ready to go. So do, do keep that in mind that we're going to need that. And as per usual, all of the code is available to you down below in the description, the GitHub repository. So you can basically double check it from there as well. But with this, we uh, can start with the blocks over here. So that's going to be in the mod blocks class. And this is going to be quite interesting. So let's just take over uh, any of these ones. Let's just say the lamp over here. And this is going to be the drift, driftwood, driftwood, driftwood. There you go. Driftwood log over here. Of course, changing the name here too. Driftwood underscore log. This is going to be a pillar block. And we're going to, of course, remove the luminance over here. That would be a little bit crazy. And actually, we're going to go so far as to not only cr not create this, but we're actually going to copy this over from blocks.oak underscore log here in this case. And then it's going to have all of the different, well, basic block settings that the log has as well. We can then duplicate this a couple of times. So there's going to be a group of four. Then we have a group of two. And then we have a group of one. So that's going to be absolutely right. So that's seven in total. The next one is the driftwood wood. It sounds a little bit crazy, but it is true. So we have this one in here. I always like to then also copy from the specific oak variant. So the same thing then goes if we have the stripped driftwood log right here and the stripped driftwood log right here. Of course, never change, forget to change the name. And here I also use the stripped oak log. And then similarly here, when we get to the stripped wood so this is the stripped driftwood wood i know like i said pretty crazy of a name but there we go and i also try to use the stripped oak wood here in this case these are the pillar blocks and then we can actually change back to normal blocks here for the next one which is going to be the planks this is going to be driftwood planks driftwood planks and here of course then this is also going to get the oak planks copied and we have the leaves quite important here leaves which are going to be a leaves block of course then taking over here the leaves oak leaves and then last but certainly not least we have the driftwood sapling driftwood sapling over here which is going to be a new sapling block with its first parameter being well a tree this is a sapling generator however we do not have access to that yet so we haven't made it so what we're going to do is Simply copy over the oak sapling and leave this error for the time being. But this is basically all of the blocks registered. And of course, well, when we have blocks that we need to register, we then also need to go through data gen. So we're just going to go through it in order over here, starting with the tags. These are extremely important to add those. So we wanted to add the specifically the block tag, get or create tag builder, block tags dot logs that burn. And here we want to add all of our different logs. So this is going to be the driftwood log. And then we can call this a few additional times with the for the stripped log, the wood, and then both woods. Basically, this is going to be stripped wood. There we go. And the reason why we need to do this is if your tree spawns, but it is not added to either the logs that burn tag or the logs tag, then what's going to happen is that your leaves will decay. So if by any chance your leaves will decay, even though they spawn properly next to a next to a log, then that is the reason why, because it the log block has not been added to the correct tag. A similar thing happens in the item tags. This is not as important, but it is still quite nice. Get or create tag builder item tags. We're going to once again use the logs that burn over here and add exactly the same logs right here. So this is going to be the driftwood log and then this is going to be dot as item very importantly and then we can duplicate this a couple of times as well for the wood this is going to be the wood wood there you go then the stripped log and then the stripped wood variant as well another thing we can do here is get or create a tag builder for item tags dot planks the reason why we wanted to add our planks over here is so that this is going to add at least a couple of 
already sort of generally made recipes. So for example, you can then make sticks out of your planks, things like that, everything that is not included in a specific wood type. So for example, this obviously would not generate the recipes for custom stairs because that would require like driftwood stairs. Should be fairly obvious in that case. We continue with the loot. Now the loot is super freaking simple. I will copy over a bunch of this. You can see that, well, the log, the wood, the strip variants, the planks and the sapling all just drop themselves. Super freaking easy. Nothing to really be concerned about here in this case. However, when it comes to the drops for the leaves, they look just a little bit different and they look kind of like this. So this is obviously for the driftwood leaves. This is a leaves drop where the leaves drop when you use shears and a sapling has a certain chance over here to drop I chose 0.0625. I believe this should be the same chance that Oak has. So there you go. That's literally going to be it in this case. Nothing too crazy. And once again, when I copy over the code, as always, all of the code is available down below. So you can check it out there as well. Then we get to the different log stuff. And the log stuff is super freaking easy for the mods, for the, for the models over here. Because, well, I'm actually going to copy this over and you're going to be like, wait, what? That's it? Yes. So we have, you use the block state model generator, register log over here. And then you can see what we can do is we can register the log and then the wood associated with this particular one, right? And that is literally it. So we just need these two lines for both the log as well as the wood and then also the stripped variants of both of these. And then similarly, when it comes to all of the rest, it's going to be super simple. The planks are just a simple cube, fair enough. The leaves here are a singleton with a leaves texture model. And then the tintable cross block state here is for the sapling. That is the only one that looks a little bit crazy, but overall that is fine. Now those should also all generate the item model JSON files automatically. So we are basically good to go. And that is actually everything we need to do in data gen. We're going to, well, not add any recipes. Those should be trivial to add in, in this case. And you should basically know how to do that. In the item, we of course wanted to add everything to an item group. That is, it can sometimes happen that one forgets this. I would of course never forget this ever. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> of course, nothing crazy going on over here. Literally just adding them to the block group over here. And that is pretty much it. And when we have that done, we can move on first of all to the assets over here. Translation and textures. The translation, fairly straightforward. And then when it comes to the textures, as per usual, all of the textures are available to you down below. So this would be seven textures. So all of the driftwood things, as well as the two stripped ones. So seven, one, seven in a total there. There you go. And that is going to be everything here. And then we have sort of one more thing, and that is going to be in the tutorial mod client. Well, I mean, there's a couple more things. In the tutorial mod client, we of course want to get the sapling it's render layer cutout very important and then in the tutorial mod class over here we want to add two different things over here so the first one is going to be this would be the strippable strippable block registry that registers so this is basically where we're going to make it what is the input and what is the output for stripping so that is of course going to be the log that will then turn if we strip it into the stripped log and the same thing then goes for the wood over here and the wood over here. Those two, very important. And then another one is going to be the the fire. So this is going to be the abstract fire block. We can actually take a look at this. Uh, let's, uh, let's just go to, I believe it is the abstract fire block. It actually is the normal fire block. Well, there you go. Uh, egg on my face, but there it is. So it is the normal fire block. And this one actually has a list over here, or yeah, I mean a list or a flammability over here and see that defines each of the blocks and how flammable they are. You know, planks are five in burn, chance and 20 in spread, things like that. And basically what we want is we want to do a similar thing. So we use the flammable block registry and we use the get default instance and then we can add a block. So for example, modblocks.log and the log here should be five and five. And we can duplicate this a couple of times because we're going to need to do this for, well, each one of our different things. Now, of course, what you can do as well is you could, you know, because these ones are always the same, you can make a method out of this and make it a little bit more, you know, generic and, and use it a little bit more easily. Absolutely no issues, but there you go. That's going to be fine for our purposes. We're just going to do it like this. The planks burn like that. And then the last one is the leaves actually, which burn like crazy. I believe this is 30 and 60 in the spread, but we can, of course, double check this in the fire block itself. 
where we can simply take a look at the logs. You can see five and five, that's fine. And then here for the leaves, we have 30 for burn chance and a 60 for the spread, which is exactly right. So those are going to be all of the different things we need. So this also makes our blocks strippable as well as making them flammable, which obviously in for your logs is quite important. And that's going to be all of the things that we need for the blocks themselves. And we can now move on to the tree itself, starting with the configured feature. So the configured feature, of course, first of all, requires a registry key again. So public static final registry key of configured feature, question mark, question mark. And this is going to be the driftwood underscore key equal to the register key method. We am going to call this driftwood over here. And then we're going to have in the bootstrap method a register call. I'm actually going to copy this over. Reason is going to get, uh, well, it's going to be uh, noticeable why. And that is because it's uh, quite long. However, of course, I will explain each of these different things. Uh, the first line should be fairly self-explanatory. We pass in the context. We use the key. This is a tree feature. And then we need to configure this as this is a configured feature. We're going to use the tree con feature config builder for this. And then we have sort of two or three different things that we need to look at. These two lines over here define what is going to be the block that is set down as a log. Of course, in our case, it is the driftwood log. You can, in theory, choose any block you want. You can even make different block state provider types. The off is the simple one, and you can you choose any of them, random, integers, pillar, there's abstract noise, weighted ones. You can do all sorts of crazy things over here if you so choose to. Similar thing happens with the straight trunk placer. You can, of course, choose different trunk placers over here. You can see if you click on this control H to see the hierarchy, you can see all sorts of different trunk placers that you can choose from and, of course, changing the numbers as well. And a similar thing happens here with the second block state provider. That is, of course, what the types of leaves are that we want to place down. And then the blob foliage placer is how we place those down. Similarly, here in the foliage placer, there are plenty of different examples of custom foliage placers that you can use as well. Highly recommended to just play around with this a lot. Take a look at the vanilla examples that we've seen via the tr features over here, right? Go to the tree, control, left click on this, control, left click on this, go to the tree configured features and just take a look at what the frick they are doing. Highly, highly recommended and just test out a lot of stuff and then hopefully you're going to be able to figure out whatever your tree is going to be and look like. The last thing here, the two layer feature size. Uh, I'm still just a little bit unsure about what this does. Uh, this has always been strange because, well, WorldGen is very strange. I will tell you that. I believe that what this does is it basically sort of bounds. Okay, this is how big the feature is. So this configured feature in this case, so that they can't overlap each other. That's something like that. Uh, but once again, also here, play around with it a little bit and you will find a solution and also look at the even examples. With this one done, we can then go to the world package, make a new package called tree. And instead of there, we'll make a new Java class called the mod sampling generators. There you go. And this is going to get us the generator. So this is going to be a public static final sampling generator. I'm going to call this driftwood equal to a new sampling generator. Tutorial mod, mod ID and then a plus and then a string with colon driftwood. Very important that this is done correctly over here. And then an empty optional, so optional empty, then an optional dot of mod configured features dot driftwood key, and then lastly, another empty optional. And that is going to be it. We can then move back to the mod blocks class, where we can finish the sapling over here, mod sapling generators dot driftwood. And now from the sapling, if it grows, then the driftwood sapling generator is going to point towards the mod configured feature. And it's going to say, hey, this configured feature is what we should spawn when the tree grows. So in theory, of course, this would mean that you could, in theory, spawn almost anything. You can see that this only requires a configured feature. So yes, what we could do is also just pass in, let's say, the like pink garnet ore key. And all of a sudden it would spawn random ores. I think that should work. I haven't tried it, honestly. But, you know, once again, be open to experimentation with things like this. Because that is the best way to learn anything but specifically Minecraft modding in this case. With that done, we can move on to data gen. Of course, we need to data gen not only all of the block JSON files and all of that craziness, but also the configured feature here for the tree. And that should be, I believe, 36 different JSON files that are going to be written over here. Uh, of course, I've gone through the Forge Neo Forge tutorials already, so that's why I know the rough number of them. But let's just let this run through and we'll see. Oh, look at that. We only get 34. It might be that we're missing 
a, a an item model JSON file or something of the sorts. But I guess we'll see that once we go into the game. So let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, are back in Minecraft. As you can see, there is one thing over here in the stripped uh, driftwood log that is broken. But the rest over here, as you can see, we're going to fix that, of course, in just a second. But you can see all of the rest over here work totally fine. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, the sapling itself, I can set it down right here. And if I were to get some bone meal, well, then what we'll find is that this is also going to grow an awesome tree. Awesome. Now, one other thing is that it looks a little bit weird inside of the inventory. Uh, we can actually also fix that as well. But yeah, that is going to be uh, an easy fix. And the inventory one is a weird fix. But let's take a look at both of those. The texture just has to be renamed. So it's stripped driftwood log top. I believe this should be renamed properly when you download the stuff. If it is not, obviously double check this, right? Don't just copy over mindlessly. Always double check stuff. I am also, I, I can make mistakes. I probably made more mistakes than you <laughs> in modding. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Always double check the spelling and don't just take my word for it. So that is going to be one thing. And then when it comes to the model, we can generate a normal JSON file over here for the driftwood sapling by simply adding, well, this one over here, right? Item model generator for the driftwood sapling as item and then a generated. However, one thing that we need to do for this is then we need to go ahead and duplicate the sapling over here and also add it to the item folder. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? Because obviously this now points, we can actually see this points to the item folder. And I don't know if there is an easy way to have it point to the block folder. And at that point, honestly, just copy over the JSON, the, the PNG file, because what is this? Is this? It's 535 bytes. Oh man, I think we can duplicate that. I think that that's going to be okay, right? In, in the in the days when freaking, um, if we're in freaking Call of Duty is like 300 gigabytes, I think we can uh, be okay that our Microsoft mod takes up over like another half a kilobyte. Oh no, how could we ever do this? But yeah, basically that is going to be the fix for this. And then everything looks and it works great. Freaking awesome, man. And that was a custom tree. Next time in this video, we'll also generate it inside of the world. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.